cheat, nobody hires me. Now, before I start the show, there's one question I do get asked by people, so in order that you may understand and enjoy the show just a little bit more, people say to me, Martin, for once in your life, please be honest with us. Is this an honest deck of cards? Is it marked? Is it gimmicked? Or is it tricked up in some way? Well, folks, I'm going to be honest with you, and this is the only time I will be doing the entire performance. I buy my cards in a drugstore, and that's the way I use them. And as you'll see, the cards are honest. It's only the hands that cheat. So welcome to the show. It's cheating time. And so your name is? Adrian. Adrian? Adrian? Nice to have your table, Adrian. Martin Nash, and your name is? Steve. Steve. Steve and Adrian. Adrian and Steve. Sounds like an old vaudeville routine, doesn't it? Yes. And let's see. Yep, they're all there. Don't you count guys that way? No. Oh, I thought everybody did. And you know, as I travel around the world, I guess the one question that I get asked about a deck of cards probably more than any other, and that is, Martin, how do you shuffle those things? Because quite truthfully, most people do not know how to shuffle a deck of cards. Now, if you watch people, it can be interesting. As an example, Steve, I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but the bigger the game, the more the money, the worse the shuffling. Right? It's true. Your big money game is always somebody who takes a deck of cards, says just three times, drops two on the floor, and tells me he shuffled it. Done nothing but cut it. Bridge players, they spend considerable time on this one. It's a very pretty shuffle. But then for some reason, they always tip the deck up this way and let everybody see the bottom card. Now, you shuffle for your partner. That's the last card he gets in his hand, and everybody knows it. And that's why all gamblers are required to shuffle the same way, right onto the table. Nice, even meld. And then they always give it a few cuts to confuse the issue. On the other hand, if I want to show off, I do it like this. Well, maybe and everybody's doing that now, so I don't bother with it anymore. The most popular shuffle used around the world, the Haymow, the overhand shuffle. Many ways, which indeed we do shuffle a deck of cards. Gentlemen, we're going to play poker. You don't mind, you, Adrian. I cheat. Not much. Only when I have to. In my business, I have to. Steve, would you please cut one half the deck over here? Thank you. Uh, Adrian, how many people would you like to see in this brand little game of poker? Five, six, seven, how many? Five. Five is a good number. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, now that's an ace. That's just luck. Or if I don't get it, they fire me. Now, when I play with my friends and neighbors because they don't trust me too much, they make me shuffle a deck between each round. Of course, after I've shuffled it, they always ask for another cut. Steve, would you please cut one half the deck again? Thank you. We have five people in the game. Do they all stay for a second card? They all stay for a second card. Oh, now that's a pair. No, you can see, you see there's an a, a on each one? Yeah, don't pay attention to the color. It doesn't mean a thing. I was down in Vegas not too long. Beth came up to me and said, Martin, he said, you're supposed to be a gambling expert. He said, tell me, how can I come out of Vegas with a small fortune? I said, it's easy. I take a large one. So would you please pay attention? I told a joke. <laughs> it's an old one, but it's the only one I know. Steve, would you cut the deck again? Adrian, we have five people in the game. How many drop out? Two. Two drop out. So we're something like that. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Getting better. Now, Steve, there's something I'd like to point out, if I may. You'll notice that I have the ten of clubs on the bottom, the ten of hearts on top. Would you please cut to the ace of spades? Yeah, you see, I need one more over here. Well, that's very good. Have you been practicing? I've been watching. Now, last time I saw him play cut cards like that, we shot him. We laughed about it. We hung him. Now, how many, uh, how many stay in now? One. One. So it's just me and the, side, the player. Yes. And you know, folks, that's one of the reasons none of my friends and neighbors ever play poker with me. Pay attention, Steve. You'll learn. Now, if you play bridge, twist, poker, gin, rummy, snap, or crazy eights, or if you watch people, there's always one fellow who loses. And then when he loses, you notice this, he always wants to cut the cards, double or nothing. Adrian, I'm now going to teach you how to cut cards. Aren't you glad you came? Yeah. Say yes. Hmm? And in order to do it, I'm going to use the four aces. Do you play bridge? No. no. I set them up and was often referred to as bridge, or alphabetical order. And that is namely a spade, a heart, a diamond, and a club. Now, I'm going to lose the four aces into the deck because there's one thing I want you to remember, please, Adrian. And that is, if you're going to cheat, be honest about it, right? Say yes. Right. Yes. And I'm going to give the deck just one more shuffle. It's the bridge shuffle, because I want you to be the judge for the rest of the audience that it is indeed a fair and honest shuffle. Okay? okay. Good enough? Good. Good. 
Now, when I drive cut cars with friends and neighbors of mine, for some reason I've never been able to determine they don't trust me too much. No, really. So usually what happens is the fellow over here always starts telling me a joke while the fellow over here makes sure there's not an ace on the bottom. And he throws me the punchline while the fellow over here makes sure there's not an ace on top. Then when it's my turn to cut the cards, he make me do it with one hand like that. Amy, would you please pay attention? I'm trying to teach you. Would you like to see that again? Say uh, yes. See, you never have an ace down here. You never have an ace up here. Take the deck, one hand, make a cut, get an ace. I know something Steve Adrian doesn't understand. Well, you're having a problem, too. Tell me, would it help you if I did it for you with the cards face up? Say maybe. 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 As I say, never keep an ace down near the bottom. Never keep one up near the top. People know you can cheat that way. Take the deck, one hand, make a cut, get an ace. Would you like to see something difficult? Say yes. Yes. This time, I will not cut to the ace of spades. What I will attempt to do is to cut to the one and only card in the entire deck that from wherever it is and counting its value will count down to the ace of spades. Steve, do you have any idea at all in the world what I'm talking about? Yes. Then would you explain it to me because I don't have a clue. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, please remember, on the bottom of the deck I have a six. On top of the deck I have a seven. I said I would cut to a card somewhere near the center. Now, the card I cut to is a ten. I said wherever it was and counting its number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Would you care to make a small wager? No. Thank you. Now, if you play bridge whist poker or any particular game, I am now going to show you how to save some money. And ladies and gentlemen, I mean this very sincerely. If you should ever mail four of a kind, such as the four aces, a straight, a flush, in other words, any group of cards is easily memorized. Never, ever take them as a packet, put them into the deck, and then attempt to shuffle it. There is, of course, a reason I say that. The average person right here, right now, can shuffle this deck five times and not separate those four cards completely. The reason? Most people, when they shuffle cards, shuffle in blocks of four to seven cards. Every professional gambler in the world knows this. He uses it to his advantage because he knows when one of those cards comes out, the odds are one or more will follow. He bets accordingly. He could win a great deal of money. What I suggest people do is extremely simple. Just take the cards and insert them at random throughout the deck. See, Adrian, by doing that now, the aces are already separated. So if you square them up, push them in flush, and then shuffle, nobody can know the order, the position, and if one ace follows the other, nobody can know it anyway. By the way, Adrian, do you play poker at all? Mm -hmm. A little. When you do, what's your favorite game? Draw, stud, seven, low ball. What do you like? Seven. seven is a good game. Mine's draw. Do you know why? That way nobody ever sees what I'm getting in my hand. Now I'm going too fast again. I can t pay attention, Steve. You'll learn it before the evening's over. Now, once you have the cards you want on top, you can do anything. Now, Adrian, I'm going to shuffle the deck, and I want you to keep your eye on one, two, three, four aces. Keep your eye on those four aces right there. Because I'm going to shuffle the deck four times. And if you watch carefully, you'll notice that they're going down something like an elevator. And if I've done it correctly, the aces, of course, are no longer on top. What I've now attempted to do is one at a time and alphabetically spade hard diamond club, shuffle them down to the bottom. You may go home and practice after the show, Steve. You'll learn to make a fortune. And now, folks, I'm going to tell you all a true story. I know this is a true story because I make it up as I go along. Last Friday night, I got hustled into a game of poker. You believe that, Steve? You believe that, and you'd buy anything, let me tell you. Now, folks, I'll be honest with you. It was a Friday night, and I was working late. Because it was late, I was tired. Tired, I was lazy, so I used a Mark deck of cards. That's understandable, isn't it? Yes. Now, a Mark deck is not like this. A Mark deck is simply a deck that you can tell each and every card from the back as easy as most tell it from the face. Now, after the gentleman to my right cut the cards, because they were marked, I have to know that so the ace of spades is on top of the deck, which, of course, is a very good card. And tell me, Adrian, how many people would you like to see in this friendly little game of poker? Four. Four. One, two, three, four. Now, when I went to the... Well, you didn't think I was going to give the ace of spades to them now, did you? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've been photographed doing this many, many times on both television and on film and slow motion. 
Now, I've never, ever tried to tell anybody that the slow-motion camera can't see the other cars coming out of the deck, because obviously it can. What it could not see was how I got them. There I was dealing with the deck in the normal position, face down. I'm now going to attempt to do it with all the cards, face up, so you may catch me. Are you ready, Steve? Yes, you sure you're ready? Yes. Yeah. You're positive. Ace spades, watch carefully. Ace is making it ready now. Ace spades on top of the deck. Would you like to see that again? Why not? Why not? Of course, you see, if you want, you can deal all day, and the ace just stays there. And in slow motion. Now, a little while later on in the evening, we're playing blackjack. Now, of course, in blackjack, the ace of spades is the best card in the deck, but they deal a little bit differently. Somebody asks for a card, give them one. Now, you give them that. Get the ace here. Pay attention. A little while later on, the fellow over here made a small bet. Now, remember, folks, I want to win because if I lose, I've got a cheap place to get my money back. Ace of spades on top of the deck. He asked for a card. Gentleman over here asked for change, so I gave it to him with one hand. Why another gave him that, kept it here. On the other hand, if I'm dealing face down, I don't want the top card. I can deal it to myself like this, to a partner like that, and it still stays here. Am I going too fast for you, Adrian? No, you're just watching too slow, right? Now, when you're playing studs, you're required to call out each card that's dealt, such as a seven or a three, but you keep the ace. People have said to me, okay, Martin, you think somebody's cheating? What do you do? Folks, I have asked this question of professional gamblers literally all over the world. And by and large, every single professional I have ever talked to said, Martin, make them hold the deck lengthways in the hand. Because by holding it in this position, these fingers are fully stretched out. It digs into the palm and it literally cramps the hand. And according to professionals, nobody has ever learned to hold a deck of cards like this, deal them on the table, and keep an ace up here. Would I lie? That's conceivable. Just a moment ago, I was talking about the most popular game in Nevada today, which, of course, is the game of blackjack. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special request to make at this time. Please pay very close attention to what I'm now about to say. It is extremely important. What I'm now about to show you will never, ever happen to you in any casino anywhere in the world. Please understand that. The odds are it will never happen to you in any private game anywhere in the world. The reason, to my knowledge, I don't think there's five people in the world who can do this. Blackjack is not a North American game. It was invented in France in 1750, where it was known as Vint and or 21. It went to England, where they called it Pontoon, where they now call it Poon. But during the days of the riverboat gamblers, the early 1800s, it came to North America. And from these two cards, it got its present name, Blackjack. Now, during the days of the riverboat gamblers, they realized that anybody could get a perfect blackjack to the bottom of the deck. And because there's only two cards to control, by simply dropping them onto the table first during a regular shuffle, they could literally shuffle all day and never disturb the position. Consequently, from now, was that all proficient at bottom dealing on the first round could always get a blackjack and, of course, win a great deal of money. So for that reason, and many people today do not know where this came from, they decided to reverse the top card to the bottom. Many people think that this is done in order to show the dealer when he's run through the deck. No. Primarily it was done to prevent bottom dealing. You see, if you go to deal the bottom card, you get the wrong card facing the wrong way. And that is the reason today that we still burn the card. How many people in this game? Five, six, seven, how many? Five. five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, of course, folks, as you realize, I got the jack of spades, but that's just pure blind luck. But please remember the ten is reversed so I couldn't get the ace. The second card that the dealer takes is a little bit different because he always slides it underneath. So as I always tell people, if you're going to play blackjack, reverse this card. Nobody can do this, and you're going to save yourself a little bit of money. Now, isn't that worth knowing? Thank you. That, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what happened to me on Friday night. Saturday night was just a little bit different. Saturday night is what I call the night of coincidence. You see, it was just by the sheerest coincidence that I happened to notice that the ace of spades and the ace of clubs happened to be on the bottom of the deck. What was even more of a coincidence, the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds happened to be on top of the deck. The real coincidence, I was dealing. And tell me, how many people in this game, Steve? Five, six, or seven? Six. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, of course, folks, as you realize, I got the Ace of Hearts because I needed it. Yeah. 
Oh, by the way, Adrian, I kept the Ace of Diamonds up here because I'm going to need it later on. <laughs> now, Adrian, if you remember, we had the two red aces on top. So I wasn't dealing the top card. I wasn't dealing the second card. It wouldn't be possible to deal a third card, and I wasn't dealing the bottom card. So tell me, Adrian, what card was I dealing? Any card I want. Yes, now you're starting to understand. Now, of course, it's later on. Now, in this particular game, we're playing a game known as Seven Card Stud. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, they deal two cards face down, four up, and one down. And if you remember, I have the Ace of Clubs on the bottom. So now I had to deal with deck something like this. Now, at this particular point in time, unknown to me, the fellow sitting right here is getting just a little bit suspicious. And Adrian and I couldn't figure out why. So Steve, he has to cut the deck. That will now place the Ace of Spades right in the center. And tell me, how would you like me to deal the Ace of Spades? Face up, as in stud, or face down, as in draw? Face up. Face up. The Ace of Spades. From the center of the deck. To myself. Next. Can't be done. Here we go. Going for the Ace of Spades from the center of the deck. So as I tell all of my audiences, wherever I work all over the world, no, it is not true that all gamblers cheat. But it is true that no cheat gambles. Because as you can see, he makes it a certainty. However, ladies and gentlemen, from myself and the deck of cards, may the shuffled deck of light deal each and every one of you happiness. Thank you, Ken, and I do hope you've enjoyed this show. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.